Hey guys, as you can tell, I'm back at the house for day two of renovation. So I didn't actually get anything done regarding the carpet yesterday. What I did instead was, I don't know if you guys remember in the last episode, where I showed you the office space, there was some flooring that was already partially removed. So I decided to go ahead and get the rest of that removed. So as I was removing that, I actually found out that underneath that, under the underlayment, there was all this, uh, I don't know if it's linoleum or what you would call it really, but um, a bunch of this all over the house. Um, not just under that particular flooring in that room, but it's actually under the carpets as well. So hold on, let me show you that real quick. So this is what I'm talking about here. So this is like super crumbly. It breaks as soon as like you put any amount of force on it. Um, hence all of this mess. My mom said this would be super hard to remove because it's actually glued down to the floor, but I guess just because of how old this has really been on here, the glue has just completely broken apart. So you can sort of see where there has been previous patchwork done. This is like, I guess, newer glue compared to all of this older stuff around. Um, and now going to the carpet, this may be a little hard to see, but underneath all of it, under the uh, foam as well, is just more of this flooring. So I'm gonna have my work cut out for me. There's gonna be a lot to do, but thankfully it's not that hard to do. I don't know if y'all saw my story, but all I had was this trusty pry bar, which I highly recommend if you're trying to do something like this. And didn't even have to use any force, just letting it scrape along the floor. All of it chipped up. So super easy to do. Uh, just clean up was a little messy. This is, it did get pretty heavy. I think I'm gonna have to get some uh, uh, contractor grade trash bags because as you can tell, this one already has a few holes in it. I did discover something pretty disgusting while I was going at this. Uh, I really don't know how people live in homes like this. This is gross, uh, but it's just a bunch of like worms and roaches and bugs and eggs glued down to a plank. I'm sure you guys saw way more than you wanted to, but there's that. And actually I didn't get to show you guys the backyard, super overgrown, worse than the front yard here as you can tell. And there's actually an old shed. Um, not really sure where the key for this is, so I don't know if I can actually get access to it, but it's pretty broken down. So as you can see back there, uh, the back back wall is actually peeling off. So this is going to have to go at some point. I don't know if I'm going to be the one to do it, but this won't be here. Now, coming back into this room, I did give a shot at removing the baseboard. All of that is removed in this room and trying to peel back some of these walls. So it's made of this weird, like, I don't know. I don't even know what it is. It's not, all of these are fake ridges, which is really bizarre. It's super lightweight. It's not, it's not sheetrock or anything like that, but it is still having a bit of trouble coming off the wall. So I'm gonna have to head to Home Depot and get some more tools. Uh, a ladder for sure and remove the molding up top and then continuing to rip these out. But that may be for another day, we'll see. Now, in the meantime, I'm gonna get started on removing the carpet in some of these rooms. I'll let you guys know how it goes and if there are any particular tips and tricks that I find that will make this whole process go a bit smoother, I'll be sure to let you know. Okay, so I just finished rolling up my first bit of carpet and let me tell you, I had an idea that I would wrap each roll with twine just to keep it secure from like unbundling and everything. That was great in concept, other than the fact that it is just magnitudes more effort than just taping it all together, which I'm kind of bummed that I didn't think about earlier, but by far, this has been the longest, most time consuming portion of it all. So if you're trying to do this, highly recommend just using duct tape. Don't use string. Just wanted to give you guys an idea of what exactly I was talking about earlier with those tiles. Um, so yeah, this continues all the way into the rooms. And actually, now that I think about it, I'm pretty grateful for it because typically what happens is that under the layers of carpet, you have layers of foam. 
to secure the foam to the, uh, to the floor, they'll typically nail or staple it to either wooden subfloor or just nail it into the concrete. Thankfully, I don't have to deal with any of like staple, nail removal, or hammering them back down because they literally did none of that to this foam. So it's super easy to bring up. And yeah, I mean, this is why I do not like carpet. Just look at how drastic the discoloration is, like all of these stains, you just can't see them and they're there. And if something happens and you can't deep clean it, then you have to replace it. And it's just a huge pain and all in all, not worth it. All right, so part of carpet removal is taking care of these tack strips that hold the carpet to the floor. Now, I had some trouble initially because they are nailed into the floor unlike the foam underlayment. And so whenever you do that, like it just, you try to pry it open, nothing really happens. Um, so I have found that instead of just on my hands and knees trying to like pry this up piece by piece, it's a lot easier for me to just stand here and like ram it in wherever there's just no nail, which helps a lot, makes things a lot faster. Um, and typically if, so here's the place where it looks like there's a nail cause it's not coming up. Instead of attacking this directly, it's a lot easier to go on either side of it. And then typically it'll just pop up like that. So just a little tip for you guys, if you guys are doing carpet removal yourselves. Okay, sorry in advance if my audio is a little more muffled. Uh, I did put on a mask because I have pretty bad dust allergies and this kicks up a lot of debris. So now that I have removed the carpet and the foam and the tacking strips, it's time to do what I didn't get to show you guys before, which is the removal of this tile. Now this definitely isn't like real stone tile because that's what the bathroom is and this definitely will not work on that because it's way too rigid. Um, so literally all I did was scrape and this just comes right off. It's pretty satisfying, no effort whatsoever, and it all comes up. So I'm gonna do this for the entire room, clean up, and then show you the result. All right, so about an hour later, as you can see, I have pushed everything into the room. Uh, basically, I do that so I can really see what parts haven't been uh, scraped up off the floor. So this really helps me get a good idea of where I'm at, how much I have left. Now, as you can see, the concrete along the sides of the walls have really just chipped up pretty badly. That was because of the tagging strips and they were a huge pain to get off, especially on that wall, because I don't know who had the bright idea of tagging them right up against the baseboard. It was really hard to get a hammer in there and pry them up. So I really just resorted to uh, smashing them in the side and that really just popped up this entire piece. So that's what I had to do for some of these bigger chunks. So I was on my hands and knees a lot during this whole process and I really wish I had used knees pads because my knees are absolutely killing me right now. You have to have the right tools for the right job and with that being said, everything I've used so far will be in the description below in case you're interested in picking anything up. I don't want to bore you guys too much with the other rooms that I'll be knocking out today. It's just going to be more of the same process. So I'll leave you with that until next weekend when I can actually start picking up more work. I do have an appointment with the second uh, general contractor on Thursday, I believe. And so after he sends me his quote, I should be good to go on choosing a final contractor for the project. Uh, and I think from that point forward, things will start speeding up even more. So look forward to that. Hope everyone has a great rest of their week and stay safe.